Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Um, if you are logged in, you are logged in for the Navigating the Media Landscape webinar with MediaSource. And we're going to start in just a couple seconds. We're just waiting for a few people to log in. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us today. I'm really excited to share new information with you. Um, I'm Lisa Arledge Powell, and I'm with Media Source. And many of you were with us last week. Um, I was on the PRSA national webinar about digital communications during the crisis of COVID. And um, it was really well received. But what I wanted to let you know is a lot has changed in the past week. So I'm here again today. Um, I'm excited that I have with me Shannon McCormick, who is our Director of Public Relations. And she's gonna talk a lot about um, talking directly with journalists, Shannon. Yeah, hi, I lead a team, our team of extroverts at MediaSource, if you will. And we're the team that's talking to the media all day, every day. We're really trying to stick close to the journalists um, in this difficult time. So I hope some of the information that we've learned and we share with you will be helpful today to the journalists and of course to you. Yeah, thank you, Shannon. So um, MediaSource, we are a PR firm and we deal a lot with the media and Shannon's gonna talk a lot about that, but we get exposure for organizations through media outreach, social media. We do a lot of video content and a lot of our clients are hospitals and healthcare brands who are on the front line right now. And so we have a pretty good point of view and we really are hopeful that some of this information we'll share will help you. So let's get right to it. A quick housekeeping reminder as we get started that there is a chat function and you guys can ask questions as you have them. Great, all right, thanks Shannon. Okay, so let's just talk about why it's so important for us to understand what the news media wants right now. Well, there's new research that just came out and it is showing that most people, up to 90% of us, are consuming 24 hours of media in a week. So that means people are home, they're social distancing, they don't have a whole lot to do, so they are in front of their screens. So given that we're all glued to our screens, here's what Shannon and I are gonna talk about in the next 30 minutes. We're gonna tell you about the landscape. What has changed with the media landscape even in the past seven days? The second thing is journalist feedback. Shannon's team is talking directly to journalists and she's gonna tell you what they're saying. We'll translate that into tips for communicators. We're also gonna look ahead about and talk about what we should be watching in the coming week. I'll show you how to download a tip sheet with more resources and then also take your questions. So yeah, as Shannon said, you can be asking questions throughout um, the next 30 minutes and we will get to them all at the end. And you can also reach out to us directly afterward. So first let's talk about what has changed, right? Basically every single thing. And I think you all will agree with me about that. It's the first major health crisis in the age of social media and all of us, whether you are a communicator or whether you're just sitting home on your couch watching all this unfold, we're watching it happen in real time and it sometimes feels crazy. The second thing is we are seeing all of our friends in the media sitting at home in their kitchens, in their basements, reporting the news and we've never seen that before. And I'm excited for Shannon to share some of the anecdotes that the media is telling her and her team about because it is insane. And because of all this, what journalists need from us as communicators, it's a lot different than before the coronavirus, and it is a lot different even in the past week. So for the past three weeks, all of us have heard on traditional and social media, basically all coronavirus stories all the time, right? I mean, it has been constant. You have to just make a plan to get away from it because it's just in your face. However, here is good news for all of us. We are starting to see some very small openings in the news cycle for stories that are unrelated to the coronavirus. So we've actually heard from some journalists, including one from a national radio and digital outlet. And they're saying that they would like to get stories from us, ideas that are totally unrelated to the, unrelated to the virus. Um, and I will say the past couple of days, that's when we've been hearing it. It's the first time we've heard this for about a month. So what that tells us is the news cycle may be slowly but surely starting to turn just a bit. It's not over, but we think we're seeing a very slight change. So as you can see on this slide, there's also a shift in the trending social media conversations. So while it is still very, very centered toward coronavirus, 
this is really the first time we're seeing a decline in conversation about the topic over the weeks before. So many trending hashtags aren't related to the outbreak and some of the content related to COVID is being shared less often and getting less engagement than it has in the past. I can tell you the big picture changes we have seen over the past week, a 14% decrease in articles on social and a 32% decrease in engagement across all platforms. So that tells us there is gonna be a little bit more room for some unrelated topics. And not only are we hearing from journalists that this is that there's room for that, in the past couple of days, many of our clients, many of them at hospitals and at government agencies who are dealing on the front lines with the virus, they're starting to say to our team, hey guys, we need to start thinking about what's gonna happen when there is some room for non-coronavirus stories. So journalists and brands are starting to shift their thinking. So that means we all need to shift as well. Okay, so I said there's some small openings for other news, but I wanna tell you about when the media is reporting on the coronavirus, here are the types of storylines that they are talking about. And the reason this is really important is because these are the storylines we should be thinking about if we want to try to insert our brand into the conversation. So obviously the case numbers, the number of deaths, as you know, both of these figures are expected to increase over the next couple of weeks. We're also hearing a lot about the challenges that hospitals and healthcare workers are facing. Um, we've also heard stories about brands and people with solutions helping, and that's important for us to think about. The economic impact, that's a big storyline, and the impact of this virus on our day-to-day -day life as people across the country are staying at home and practicing social distancing. So I would say to you, this is probably the most general topic that, that you may be able to tie your brand into. So you need to think about how is this affecting your employees? What is your brand doing to support them? These are some things that you may be able to use to get your brand into the news cycle. So we expect these storylines to continue over the next week. The economic impact story is probably gonna become more prevalent as states continue to ask these non-essential businesses to continue to stay closed. So keep all these storylines in mind as you're trying to figure out how to get your brand back involved in the conversation. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Shannon and she's gonna share with you directly what she and her team are hearing from journalists. Shannon? Yeah, it's an interesting time. I, I don't know if anybody else feels like, like I do, but I, I've been on an emotional roller coaster and we hear that from the media right now. So on any given day, any different journalist may be experiencing something different, but these are the themes. And the big one this past week has really been stress in the media. You know, these are people that already had difficult and intense jobs, and now their job security is a huge, huge factor. Uh, here's a real honest and frank comment from Ginger at the Cleveland Plain Dealer, a paper that we love working with. Um, you know really impacted by the layoffs that have been happening. And, and, you know, here's the rub. The ratings and readership for outlets like this are very high right now. But uh, the people to produce the content is, is changing. So yesterday, ABC News told us that their viewership is at its highest level that it's been in 17 years. So they're excited about that. They feel pressure to deliver a great product differently um, as this increased audience is there. But the economic forecast for the media is not good and it's unsettling. Um, Gannett is downsizing. You know, BuzzFeed thought that they were on track to be really profitable this year. Uh, after they, they had some layoffs and some rough points last year, they really thought they were on the right track this year. And now they're changing their tune and saying that the impact of the coronavirus on the global economy will almost certainly cause BuzzFeed to lose money. So that's an uncomfortable thing for journalists to hear. And as major media operations downsize their staffs, we are really keeping an ear to the short term and the long-term impacts and what this means to us as communicators and how we may need to pivot or adjust. And um, we're thinking that by next week, we should have a lot more information to talk about there and be able to talk about, you know, if your contacts are disappearing, what can you do there? It is an interesting time though, because in the midst of all of this uncertainty that journalists are dealing with, social distancing is, 
it's changing the way they gather news and the way they report the news. Live from the living room was not a thing that most journalists thought they'd see in their lifetime. Um, even networks like CBS This Morning, they're reporting from home. And working at home isn't just happening at the national level, it's happening in local markets where journalists um, are kind of MacGyvering their own little studios. This is Pauline Lee. She's an anchor in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and she's even set up her own teleprompter in her living room. So Pauline, it, it must be tech savvier than me and is very well equipped there. And oh, this was this was a good one. Um, so Dave Mazza is a meteorologist here in Columbus, Ohio, and <laughs> he has like a full green screen and his weather situation set up in his home. And there's this this clip that he shared where he was trying to do the weather and all of a sudden you hear him start like yelling to his family, hey, you guys, come on, who let the dog in? You can't see the dog, but clearly like the dog is at his feet and has gotten into his workspace. So he had a furry coworker showing up. All kinds of just different distractions. Um, we, I saw a weather person here in Columbus have his child do the forecast with him because his kid was at home and needed something to do last night. And, and that was funny. Uh, the takeaway here though is, journalists um, are different right now. You know how they used to be pretty abrupt with us PR people sometimes, sometimes us with them. I would just say now more than ever, make sure you're using compassion in dealing with the media. And remember that these journalists are on the front lines too. They are first responders. Um, they are people who can and do get sick and catch COVID-19. Uh, Chris Cuomo, oh my gosh, can you imagine being on national TV and having this virus? He, he's doing an amazing job. Um, journalists are also showing us their humanity and their home lives in a totally different way. You know, typically it's a journalist uh, who's trying to get their interview subjects to show emotion and cry on camera. Well, what a big role reversal we're seeing. Hoda cried last week about a donation from Drew Brees making a donation in New Orleans. Robin Roberts shed tears on Good Morning America when uh, showing a text from her niece who is a nurse. Now keep in mind, these are people that have a public persona, but a lot of times they don't talk about their families publicly. They cer we certainly don't see them in their homes talking about their families and, and showing emotions. So that's really different. Um, Chris Cuomo, we've seen a lot of emotion in interviews. There was there was one very emotional interview he gave about an end of life situation, and then he threw it back um, and Don to Don Lemon, who had to jump in, and 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 he was emotional. You can tell that these journalists have been living twenty four seven with this one singular story that they're telling, and that they are feeling this too. So keep that in mind as as you work with them and. You know, I've been just trying to thank the journalists for what they're doing because information is power and is something that's really going to help us in this crisis. Now, I've given a lot of national examples here, and I think it's important to slow down for a minute and talk about the high importance of local media. This is a big national story, and there will be a lot of national news opportunities, right? But we cannot forget about our local media because this national story is affecting everybody locally. And you have to remember that national media speaks to a nation. They use examples to show trends of the bigger picture. Local media speaks to their neighbors in a local context. And uh, these are people, you know, go to work in our community. They might go to some of our churches. They raise families in some of our schools. And at the end of the day, they have a different stake in some of the outcomes. National media is based on the coasts where things are looking different right now. I will say they're doing a good job covering the Midwest. I think they typically do. We have lots of crews that you know fly in here or pick up stories uh, from Ohio through a variety of means. Um, but your local media is a big factor in this because the national media often gets here because local media can feed the national media cycle. National journalists review, absorb, um, report what their local counterparts are doing. So I guess what I'm saying here is a 
good story on a smaller outlet has the potential to feed a bigger outlet. There is a food chain in the media and it can work for us as PR people. And you also have to remember that when this one singular, huge international story is over, it's your local media that are still going to be here to cover your other stories. And it's gonna be important to still have those trusting relationships with them. You, you have local media people that you know and trust as PR people, they know and trust you. The community trusts their local media in a different way. Consumers value and trust their local journalists more than the national ones. Newspapers ranked highest um, in the most recent Pointer Media Trust Survey, but that sentiment is also starting to translate an increase to the online traffic for local outlets um, amid this crisis. So getting the right information to your local media is every bit as important as the national media here. Now, Lisa, I know you're getting lots and lots of news from Chris Cuomo, right? Oh yeah, I could. I, I think he's doing an amazing job. I could watch him 24 seven, right? So it sounds like what you're saying, Shannon, is things have changed dramatically for journalists, right? They are doing all these new things. We still need to care about our local media markets. But what I wanna touch on is, what does this mean in general for us as communicators with all this stuff changing at one time? I'm gonna to try to walk you through some tips so you can try this with your brand this week. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, now is the time to pitch any story that ties directly or even indirectly to the coronavirus. On screen, you see a Skype interview and the media source team helped coordinate that for NBC News's national feed just a couple days ago. And it's an expert who talked about the psychology of panic buying. Now, this is a story angle that ties into how the crisis is affecting people's daily lives. So what I want you to do is to think about the daily life happening in your city, in your area, with your brand, How? what is your brand's point of view? How are you dealing with it? Do you have a unique way of dealing with it? Something you're offering to your employees? So that's one story that you can think about trying to tie into. The second thing is journalists do wanna hear your pitches about companies and people overcoming all the challenges of COVID-19. Think about, do you have any examples from your executives or from your people that you can share with the media? Maybe even some examples of your customers, um, customers that have reached out to you. Journal journalists also want to know what companies and people are helping with solutions. For example, our team talked to a national cable network producer just this week. She said to us, do you know any brands or any people who are acting as helpers during this crisis? What companies are helping people? So uh, what I would say to you as communicators, if your brand is being a helper, you should be pitching that. So maybe start with your local market, then move to national. If you don't know who to pitch that story to, please reset, reach out to either Shannon or me after this webinar, and maybe we can direct you to some um, journalists that are looking for this exact story because they do want these stories right now. Okay, so the next tip I have for you is to pitch good news. We talked a little bit about this last week, but we are seeing it kind of explode over the past couple of days. So an example of a good news story is uh, the one that you see on screen, the Getty Museum in California asked people to recreate works of art. And that was kind of a fun, lighthearted story that loosely tied into the fact of all the time that we have on our hands right now and we can't go visit museums, right? On the right side of the screen is a recreation of a family's spring break trip that they weren't able to take. Shannon pitched that to national media, and I want Shannon to explain why she did, because it's something that we as communicators can learn from. Oh, absolutely. You know, Lisa, this is me trying to be a helper here. There's no direct client benefit to sharing this story with a journalist for us. This was uh, a friend of a friend had some hilarious stuff on his Facebook page where they were doing these very elaborate photo shoots pretending they were on vacation because their vacation got canceled. And um, I, I, it made me happy. I, I thought maybe it would make other people happy to know it. So I reached out to a producer at NBC Nightly News. You know, he's a human. He's got a daughter who's not gonna have her graduation. And she's very disappointed about that because, well, 
people aren't getting together in large gatherings. So he's dealing with a lot of the life situations that all of us are, and he's working from home in a different situation. And I can be a helper by offering something that, uh, you know, his bosses will value and they'll want to put on the news. So I told them about this friend of a friend on Facebook doing this hilarious visual thing. Uh, they, he, he called me back right away. And within a few minutes, we were on the phone with this guy and they did a Zoom interview. And so we're expecting this to air in the next couple of days on NBC Nightly News. And I think that this just builds goodwill and it will help have stronger relationships in the long term because we're showing journalists when we offer them things, no strings attached, right? There, there was no um, direct business benefit for me. It's just, I understand your needs and I wanna help you. And frankly, they told me that the news people are finding all of the news they have to report, the grim numbers, the tough choices, really pretty depressing and that they were cracking up and all messaging each other about which photo they liked here. So even the process of making this story was delightful for them in a time when they needed something. And so it felt good to participate, Lisa. I think that's a really good point. And Shannon, I think it's a great tactic. You've always been really, really good at reaching out to the media and maintaining relationships. So I guess um, if, if you, on this webinar want to take the Shannon approach. <laughs> we'll call it the Shannon approach. Um, I think you could, you know, look through your social media, um, your text messages that your friends and family are sending. What is cool? What is cute? What is lighthearted? And if you see something that you think, hey, this could be real, this could be something that people would want to share and it makes you feel good, reach out to one of your journalist friends and see if they'd be interested in it. And, you know, you may just land um, you know, a national a national media hit, but also strengthen that relationship that you have with journalists. And, and that's really important to do during this difficult time for everybody. So let's talk about stories that do not relate to the coronavirus. As we've been saying, just the past couple of days, we're hearing journalists say that they're interested now in stories that do not relate to COVID-19. But what we want to say is, you as a communicator must make sure that these are great stories. And great stories are great stories, so you should be able to find a place to place them. But one thing that you need to, to really think about is if you, if you can't get a place for them, like say one journalist says no, one thing our team is great at is they'll go to maybe a different journalist because just because it's not right for one journalist or one show or one network or one outlet, doesn't mean it won't work for someone else. So now is the time, if you have a really good story, dig really deep into your media contact list because we all have a little bit more time on our hands than we have in the past. So dig deep and try to find the right person. However, my next point is to really listen hard to what you're hearing back from journalists because not every outlet is interested in the same thing. For example, Shannon and her team talked to the ABC Medical Unit this week and they said to us, the coronavirus is the one and only story that ABC Medical Unit is covering for the foreseeable future. So do not pitch us any topics other than COVID to the ABC Medical Unit. So that's just an example. Really listen to what they're saying and apply that to that outlet. So because of this news environment, we all need as communicators to manage expectations because the volume of coverage that we're getting right now may not be the same as last month or last year. So it's not business as usual. It's not media relations as usual. And we need to manage expectations for that as we plan for the future. And I think obviously the last thing is just continue to be very strategic with your contacts and seek feedback and just listen hard to what they're saying and learn from it. And then the next tip is about the media working from home. So they're not going out on, into the field as much. And this is a huge opportunity that we are seeing for communicators because we're seeing that journalists are now more open than ever before to take content directly from brands and organizations. So if you have footage, if you have interviews that you wanna offer, you can help journalists do their jobs. But the thing is you need to make it very easy for these journalists to access your content. So. Uh, if you want to see an example, MediaSource has a functionality that we created that we use for our client partners called the Multimedia Newsroom. And what it does is we put up 
videos and photos and graphics and logos. And Shannon and her team will send a URL to a journalist for a story page. They log on and they can easily with one click download any of that contact content right to their desktop. So that is at multimedia-newsroom.com. Um, and again, I do not see as, as we return to like whatever the new normal is, I see this trend continuing. So they're more open to content for brands right now. I don't think that's gonna totally go back to how it was before. So I think they'll continue to be open. So I would encourage you to try to find a way for your brand to be able to capture this content and offer it to the media. So if anybody has any questions about that, feel free to reach out and I can walk you through how something like this could work because we see journalists at all of all levels, local, regional, national, use this type of um, tool right now. So another way you can make journalist jobs easy is to prepare your spokesperson with all the things they want today. This is a screen capture of a journalist who's saying to her fellow journalists, hey guys, what do you do if you're trying to interview someone who does not know how to use Skype or FaceTime or Zoom or any of that technology? And what I want to say to you is please don't let your spokesperson be that spokesperson. The media, as we know, is not going to come back to you if you make it hard for them. So what should you do then? Well, what you need to do is make sure that your spokesperson has downloaded and is very familiar with all these different video conferencing platforms that we have seen the media use, Zoom, Google Meet, FaceTime, um, just WebEx, tons of them. So make sure you help them download these different platforms. You do some practice interviews with them, coach them on how to, where to look and, and what the um, delay may be, just so that they're very comfortable using these. And this is also a great time to make sure that your messaging and your talking points are updated and they reflect the current tone. So those are just a couple easy things you can do right now to be a rock star with your contacts in the media. So what else should we be doing, right? There's just so much happening. It's hard to know, like, what else should we be doing right now? And here is something that you can simply do along with earned media pitching. I think you should think about making sure you're amplifying any of these great stories that you have via your company owned media. Because what we have found is just like traditional news media cons consumption being up, people are looking for great content from organizations and they're consuming a lot more of it. So our team, this is an example, we create content and handle the story amplification uh, via social media for the state of Ohio's Tech Ohio website. And that's a site that features startups and entrepreneurs in Ohio. We've done it for about five years and over the past couple of weeks, we have had the fourth highest results in project history and the best results we've ever had in the month of March than any other year, which was really surprising to, to us because it, you know, it's not a site that's directly related to what's happening with the coronavirus. But here's what we did to shift our strategy. And hopefully you guys can use some of these tips for your own company owned media. So the first thing we did was we threw out our editorial calendar and instead we found companies that were that to feature that have solutions that are helping to flatten the curve and that are related to the coronavirus. So that's one thing. The second thing is we created more content that shows all the resources that the state has to offer businesses during this crisis. So that was another thing that wasn't really on our editorial calendar that we just layered in. The third thing was we stopped all social media scheduled posts because things are changing so quickly. We never want to be seen as tone deaf. And we know that right now for social media, doing it in real time is a lot safer just because of how things shift and change, you know, by the hour. Another thing that helped is we are we plugged into relevant conversations in our social media strategies, such as using hashtags that people are following. So those are some tips that when you share your story on your company owned media and social channels, you can use that we have found really helped us get an uptick in people viewing the content during this time when people are just craving content. And so the last thing, uh, the last tip I'm gonna share with you is something I feel is super important to do. 
and, and it is preparing for when shift things shift to normal. So whatever that new normal is gonna be, right? We work with a lot of hospitals and healthcare brands. They're out there on the front lines right now dealing with the media and what our team is doing and what I'm suggesting that you should do right now is start creating your post COVID-19 strategy. When things shift, even more, how are you gonna get your brand and your message back into the local and national conversation? What are your strategies? You need to be preparing now to help you in the future because things are changing very, very quickly. And um, I wanna just like uh, pitch it over to Shannon to just talk about the things that she's watching next week. Yeah, Lisa, we're trying to be really predictive here. Uh, there are a lot of moving parts. So these are some of the things we're watching qu closely. Uh, a trend. Uh, Frustration is gradually turning into freedom as working from home is starting to work for some journalists. They're set up, things are going well. That is a good thing. Uh, the product looks pretty good. The news cycle right now has some openings in it, but there is potential for it to get much more intense. You know, as the cases and the death toll spike, the news intensity is going to grow. The news intensity, we don't think around this one singular story, COVID-19, it's not going to start trending down until these numbers have peaked and the numbers start going down. That's when we'll start seeing a slight, you know, a return to normal. So we're, we're watching because um, if the news starts sounding really grim, the news cycle will change. Easter's coming. And, you know, that was hotly debated just a few days ago with the Trump administration at one point saying we should go back to normal at Easter and then reversing it. So as the calendar approaches Easter, that may flare back up. Um, the updated unemployment figures come out on Thursdays. So it's not hard to guess what the Thursday evening and the Friday pundits, you know, what those big headlines are going to be. They'll be economic. And then we are closely monitoring tone because every time something shifts in the media, kind of what is appropriate or the level of humor and escapism and featurey stories that, that the threshold is accepting is different. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, those are things that we're watching for the next week. So we know that we've shared a ton of information with you and we're going to take questions in a second. I just want to make sure that for those of you who want more information, we have more tips in this week's media tip sheet at mediasourcetv.com backslash COVID-19. Um, for those of you who downloaded last week's sheet, this is totally different and has the new information over the past couple of days. So um, hopefully that's helpful to you. So we are going to continue to provide tip sheets weekly. Shannon and I are going to be back next week during the same time because we feel like we're going to have some more information for you about what's happening with these media cuts and what you know what's happening when you're contacting your journalist contacts and all of a sudden they're on furlough. Um, so we're trying to talk over the next several days with some of our uh, friends in the media about that because we want to be able to be a resource for you um, and give you that information. So we have a couple uh, We have a couple minutes. We can go over a little bit and answer a few questions. Shannon, do you want to yeah. uh, do you want to answer Wendy's question? Sure. Wendy's asking, what is the best mode of communication with journalist contacts? Is it still email, Twitter message? Wendy, this is a great question. Um, I would say that the best mode is um, if it's a person that, that you know, it's whatever that you've learned is their preferred mode, it, it likely hasn't changed. Um, when in doubt, I would default to email first. I always tell people it is okay to pick up a phone and, and talk to a human. I think that that is becoming something of a lost art in our industry. So don't hesitate. The only problem is we called a bunch of newsrooms. Uh, we were doing a pitch about the census and we were getting newsroom voicemails because people weren't in there. So just know that uh, the phone may have a lower success rate than it did in the past. They are still checking their emails. If they were open to hearing from you on social before, it's still fine to do that. Social travels with them. This is not a great time to be sending media kits. We had these packages together for journalists with hand sanitizer and stuff like that. And all these offices started closing and I don't want to ask them for their home addresses. So I would say um, sending out media kits or things in the mail is tricky. Phoning an office is tricky, which would say email or if they're open to hearing from you on social or on their cell phone or have in the past. Those are your best bets. 
Great, thanks, Shannon. And we have one more time for one more question. This is from Mark, and Mark is asking: As many companies are cutting back due to decreased demand for products, are we seeing as an agency a decrease in the demand um, for our media services from clients? So, Mark, I will say this: We are really watching to see what's going to happen. But I think what happened in the past month, like I said, many of our clients are healthcare and hospitals, so they were kind of dealing with the crisis at hand. And then they've been really depending on us to be planning the strategy and dealing with some of these things that don't have any direct relation to, you know, what's happening right now. So we have sort of looked at the resources that we had planned, say for the month of, month of March, and we, you know, held back the ones that we haven't needed because we know that as this, uh, as we turn the corner, that um, we're going to need even more resources. So right now, um, you know, we, we haven't seen a cutback, but and we actually think that as things change, we will see a demand for some increased resources as we get back to whatever our new normal is. So with that, I just want to say thanks, um, everybody, for joining us. I know that this is a really hot topic and our team is going to stay on this. So we will be back next week at the same time with new information and a new tip sheet for you. And in the meantime, please re reach out to either Shannon or me with any questions you have. Good luck in the next week.